Well, the Affordable Care Act appears to be tottering right on the edge of oblivion. 20% of Americans have only one insurance option to choose from on Obamacare exchanges. Premiums on those exchanges rose to an average of 25% in just the last year. And now the Trump administration and the Republican Congress seem poised to kill the law completely. Professor Jonathan Gruber helped craft both Obamacare and its predecessor under Governor Romney in Massachusetts. He maintains the law is working as intended. Professor Gruber joins us now from Massachusetts. Professor, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. You um, bet. Good to be here. So there's been a lot of polling on this recently, obviously, since this has been in the news. And it looks like a pretty strong majority of Americans, around 60 percent, want to see the ACA repealed entirely or in part. Why do you think they feel that way? Well, I, I mean, the, the polls have moved a lot. Tucker, and we don't really know where the public is at this point. It's in flux. Well, we'll I think they feel sense. that... I, I think they feel that way because there's been a lot of misinformation about what the law's done. I think here's a simple example, Tucker. Everyone agrees that Obamacare has increased insurance coverage in America. But if you ask Americans what Obamacare has done to insurance coverage, almost as many claim that it's declined as not gone up. I think that's the prime example of the misinformation that's been spread. I think Americans just don't understand what this law has done for them. So you uh, famously said the law got passed because of the stupidity of the American voter not understanding, you know, the intricacies of the funding of this law. You apologize for that. But it seems like you still feel that way. You just said people don't like it because they don't understand it. But, I mean, it's their health care. Are they that dumb that they don't understand how great it is? Tucker, first of all, that wasn't what I said. Uh, what I said was an artful, and I apologize for it. What I'm saying is that there's been a huge amount of misinformation spread about this law. People don't understand what it's done. Let's just take the two facts you gave in the introduction. You said 20% of, of America only has one choice. That is for the small share of Americans to buy insurance on the exchange. That's not right. the vast majority of your listeners who get insurance from their employer. You didn't say that. You said the premiums were up 25%. Let me finish. So the premiums are 25%. You didn't mention they've been up 0% the two years before. And on average, over the last three years, have grown slower than they grew before the law was passed. So it's really okay. about just sort of a mis-explanation of what the law has done. Okay. So um, I, I'm amazed that you would say on television, and I think I'm quoting you exactly, people don't like it because they don't know what it's done for them. And again, I just let me re-ask my question. Don't you think if you're an American, an adult, able to drive, vote, and own a gun, that you would be sentient enough to evaluate your own health care sufficient to form an opinion on it? You're saying that people are so bovine so captive to the propaganda they receive. I mean, like, what are you saying exactly? Tucker, what I'm saying is that there's been a huge amount of misinformation passed around this law. If you look at the people who are actually benefited from this law, they like it. If you look at surveys of people who have gotten benefits from plans that are new under the Affordable Care Act, right. they vastly approve of those plans. Yes, The I people know. who oppose the law are people who haven't benefited from the law, but haven't been hurt from the law. They've just heard, I, in my view, they've heard a lot of bad misinformation about it. Well, see, but that's, uh, you kind of made the point. Thank you for answering directly, and I think honestly, you're saying that people benefit from it, like it, which makes sense. I think that's true. The survey shows some people really like the ACA, but the majority doesn't. It's a slim majority. It's still a majority. I thought this law was supposed to help everybody. This law was never supposed to help everybody, Tucker. That wasn't the design. The law was actually explicitly designed first in Massachusetts and then for the nation to leave the vast majority of Americans alone. People who had health insurance that worked for them through their employer or the government were not designed to be affected by this law, by and large, in the near term. They were hoped to benefit in the long term through lowering costs. But in the near term, the law was designed to fix what was wrong with our system, which was focused on the 20 percent of Americans who did not have health insurance or were buying it through a broken non-group insurance system. The okay, so, was not, and that was the design of the law. Okay, so let me, that's not at all what I heard the president at the time say, at all, and I was there. But, okay, fine point. Let me ask you, this is my sanity test. Are you really saying there are no victims of this law? No, not at all. Either, I'm not, I'm not okay, saying so that. So who are the victims? Who's been hurt by Obamacare? Who's been hurt by Obamacare is two groups. One is the wealthiest Americans, uh, the top 2% of Americans who had to pay new taxes. And uh -huh. second is very healthy individuals who benefited from a previously discriminatory insurance market. So before, insurers could kick sick people out. Well, that's bad for sick people, but good for healthy people. So if you're a young, healthy person in the market, you benefited from the fact that sick people were excluded. Obamacare said no, insurers have to behave fairly, insure everyone. That meant that for some young, healthy people, their premiums went up. I find it so striking that you vilify the groups you say have been hurt. So it's rich people who are like, who cares about them? They're horrible. And then it's healthy people who benefited from a corrupt system. I mean, do you think there's any sort of decent person who is sort of doing his best, 
who's just been an ancillary damage from this, or is it only people who kind of deserved to get what came to them? Tucker, I haven't said anything that vilified anyone. All I did was okay. state the facts of who the losers are. They're the wealthiest okay. Americans and the people who are healthiest in the market beforehand. The, I'm, I'm owning that those people were disadvantaged by the law, but let's focus on the fact that they are a small number relative to the people who are benefited from the law. More than many, many, many more people, many times more people benefit from this law than were hurt by it. Yet you just want to focus on the small number of people who, well, no. uh, who had to pay more for their health insurance. Why do you just I, I focus on that group? Well, because I wanted to focus on the over 100 million people who don't like the law, and you're saying they just don't know enough to like it. It's been a number of years now, and I just, I marvel at that. But let me ask you a specific, discrete question here. So you said that there are healthy people who are paying more, and thank you for conceding that. But I wonder why they shouldn't be annoyed that they have to pay for services they don't want or need. Why should I be forced to buy a plan that offers things that don't pertain to me in any way? Why wouldn't that bother me? Tucker, that's a trivial part of the issue. The reason that health people are paying more is not the oh. extra services, is that they're being asked to fairly be in a pool with healthy and sick people. The extra services are a trivial distraction from the problem. That's not what's you rising know what? costs. You know what? You, I, I assumed you were an expert on this, but I live in D.C., and I know the people who got rich from those so-called trivial additions. The, uh, you, you can smirk all you want. But a lot of these things were added by lobbyists for companies that wound up getting rich. Well, you can see that there were a lot of health care providers who made a lot of dough off this law and a lot of lobbyists, too. Well, you can see they're the winners as well. Well, the winners, the health care systems had winners and losers. As with any law, law creates winners and losers. The health care systems had winners and losers, just like any law you would pass would, would, uh, would create. Lobbyists make money off virtually any law. It's passed in Washington. That's the nature of their business. So I don't forcing see why you people pick on this to law. Buy, well, because they're forcing people to buy things that they don't want that don't help them. And just a last simple question. Keep it super simple. Why should I be required to buy a plan that covers things that do not apply and will never apply to me, such as breastfeeding, prenatal care, substance abuse, counseling? Those are things that will never apply to me as a non-drinking man. Why should I have to buy those plans? Well, I mean, basically, it's a legitimate question you're asking of what should be in health insurance plans. You might also ask why a woman has to buy a plan that covers prostate or, or Viagra. Yes, I would, and, buy, I, would and, ask that. I would ask that question, exactly. And basically, that's a legitimate debate to have, Tucker. But rather than having a legit, legitimate debate, you just, which is a small part of the law, you villainize the major accomplishment of the law, well, which I'm is just to asking. end the discrimination insurance okay. markets. Ask, answer the question. <laughs> okay, I'm a bad guy. I ask stupid questions, but I did ask a good question there. What's the answer? The answer is that basically, as a society, we have to decide what is going to defi define fair insurance. And if Republicans don't oh. like that part of the law, then by all means, go ahead and attack that part of the law. If you think the law benefits are too generous, but, you don't, but then that's the part of the law you don't like, fine. But that's no reason to rip the whole law down. The that's benefits that's are taking just... a sledgehammer to a small problem. That's such a propaganda line. Aren't you a professor? The benefits. I wasn't arguing the benefits were too generous. I was arguing that the benefits weren't benefits. No, you you're arguing they're too generous. No, they're not exactly, benefits to me, actually. So don't call them benefits because they're not. I don't want to buy it. I don't care to have it. Therefore, it's not a benefit. So I'm not arguing that it's too generous. I'm arguing that it's stupid for my uses. No? Well, I am not going to agree with the word, use of the word stupid in this context, but I will Superfluous, say that. Superfluous, meaningless, but, not but, of but, use. Tucker, if that's the issue that you have with the law, it's fine. One of them. Then, well, no, but if that's the issue, then go after it. But don't, once again, what you continue to do, <laughs> what you continue to do is villainize an entire law over these small issues. If you, that's the issue, then great. That's I'm fine. Asked, Let's have that debate. Let's have that debate about what the benefits should be. You didn't answer my question. You went right to propaganda. Well, if you think it's too generous, I wasn't saying that or anything even close to that. And, and I, as you know, full well. So anyway, we're unfortunately out of time. Professor, thanks for that. I appreciate it. You bet. Good to see you.